uh, be here and I just want to tell a little bit about my story and, and what I've been through to hopefully help or, or give some inspiration or, or guide along the way for uh, your endeavors. Um, I'm not here to, to sugarcoat anything and it's well, I'll try to be you know a little real as possible. Um, but just by like a raise of hands, um, who here wants to be a buyer in the future? <clears throat> okay, few. And uh, who wants to be in uh, merchandising? Okay, I have a couple. Um, and who's looking to be working as a stylist? Okay, got a little more for that. Okay. Um, yeah. That's part of what I do now too, so I'll definitely will touch upon that later. Um, but so I'm guessing the rest of you, you know, not sure. Um, well, you're still not sure yet what you want to do or um, could, could any of you tell me uh, that didn't raise their hands um, what you're looking to do or um, if you're still trying to decide? Design. Oh, nice, okay. That's what I do too. Nice. Mm. Okay. And any, any other? Um, yes. Probably product development. Product development, okay. Good, good. Um, well, <clears throat> I basically do mostly designing and some styling now, uh, but I want to just give my story um, that I've been through nearly all of it, uh, and, and I just want to also say that it all intertwines with each other. Um, the thing is, you have to really uh, do what you don't want to do, but you know that you should be doing to learn and to, and to find out what you want to do and to become better at, at what you want to do. Uh, even if you know what you want to do or if you still don't know what you want to do, it's best to just dive in and work in different parts of fashion as you can, um, work even in, in business as you can. Uh, the more things you, you put your hands on, the more things you learn, the more th things you volunteer to do, the, the better you're going to become when you are ready for uh, whatever job you want to take. And if you don't know what job you want to take, it's going to help you know what kind of job. Eventually, it's going to help you know what kind of job you want to do. Uh, I, at first, didn't know exactly you know, what I wanted to do in fashion myself. Uh, and one thing is, I know it's going to be tough. You, know, you don't want to intern for free. Um, I, I didn't want to intern for free, but, but I did it. Um, and you don't want to count buttons. And you know, I know you don't want to keep reading magazines over and over and studying the trend. Um, but I, I did all these things. And one of the ways that motivated me to do all these things was that I always kept a big vision in my head, you know, like a big goal or like a dream or like what kind of life I want or what kind of like job I want or, you know, how my lifestyle wanted to be. So if you keep that big goal in your mind, you know, that's gonna motivate you to do the emails that you don't want to write, the books that you don't want to read but you know you should be reading, the extra time um, sketching out something or reading a book about being a buyer or um, interning or volunteering for, for a stylist to learn about styling. Uh, you have to just keep that going in mind. I mean, for me, I, I wanted to have, I want to have nice cars, I want to have a nice home, I want to travel the world, you know? Um, and I, I traveled some already. Um, I mean, one of my um, part-time jobs being a stylist at um, George Armani on Fifth Avenue. Um, I work with so many different tourists. Uh, I work with so many people from around the world. I, the other week I helped um, the wife of the president of Alabama University. I helped this lady from Beverly Hills um, a couple weeks ago. And just about six months ago, um, the company, George Armani, flew me out to Toronto uh, to help them open up a store. Um, so, you know, it's definitely possible. You, you could do, you know, the life you want. Just keep that what you want, the life you want, the goals, the job you want. Keep that in your head. And that was, that's going to motivate you to do all the, the crap that, you know, you don't want to do, but you, you, you got to do. Um, but you really have to pay your dues. Um, I, I went from interning for free, and this is like after I had my business degree, 
Um, I went for interning for free. I was counting buttons at Marissa Webb. Um, she's the creative director of Van Ayer Republic. Um, I also interned for free at Zach Posen. Um, I was pleating fabric by hand. Um, a lot of times just sitting around. I uh, make a lot of photocopies, I remember. Um, even a couple of times I, I went to go get coffee. Um, <laughs> I, you know, that you could, you could stand up against that, okay, if they asked you to do that. Um, I think they're actually even doing some law, laws about that. <laughs> but, I mean, anything else besides getting coffee, you should be doing. Um, and you're not afraid or too lazy or think like you're above it or whatever. I mean, even like people that came from rich families or whatever, people that they're great now, they still had to put in, put in work. Um, so I was um, in your position like not even that long ago, probably like a little over two years ago. I, I was here in FIT, um, and so I'm an FIT alum. And um, yeah, when I started out, I, I just went you know, all out. And, and, this, and all these things, it might not even seem like it, it really applies to what I'm doing now, but it actually really helped me. You know, I'm a menswear designer mainly, and you know, the clothes I'm making, does it look like I have anything to do with Zach Posen? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> exactly. But I tell you, that really helped me to, to get to where I am now. I mean, just doing these embroidery design things on mannequins and doing like fabric tests and working with these different silks. I, I don't even like really design things with silk. But all these things actually helped me because it made me learn, for example, uh, the importance of some construction details on, on men's jackets. Uh, it, it taught me about you know, how many different types of sketches you have to do to, so you find the right sketch. Because um, you had to go through so many sketches when you want to make the right haute couture uh, gown. Um, it taught me so much just from working in, in Zach Posen, which has nothing to do with me. So, I mean, don't be afraid to just do things in fashion. Uh, volunteer for work. Um, get your hands dirty. Uh, you have to break out of your shell. You have to get out of your comfort zone um, to grow. I mean, people don't, people don't grow staying in the same type of routine they're, they're doing. Um, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you all heard the saying that, you know, you can't expect a different result by doing the same things. No. Um, it's, I mean, it's not, it's, not a, it's not like all roses and pretty world out there, um, but it's gonna be okay. When people see that you, you have this drive and people see that you're willing to go an extra mile, People notice that. You know, people might not say anything to you, but people notice every little thing about you. I mean, I'm sure you saw that there's this um, picture that's in so many schools. I see so many places. It's like communication, 93% nonverbal, 7% verbal. <laughs> I'm sure some of you saw that like for one time, right? Okay, no. <laughs> okay, well, news to you. 93% of your communication is, is nonverbal, okay? <laughs> uh, so it re people really do notice everything that, that you do. And if you're actually really working hard, you're really striving, even if you're not getting the things done right, if you're not getting it done, people will actually give you that uh, extra, you know, bonus, or they'll give you that reward, or they'll connect you with the right person because they see that you deserve it, you know, you get, you get what you deserve, you know, you really get what you give, uh, you really do. Um, I mean, another example I had was, it's a, I was actually here, sitting outside uh, between classes one day, and um, this was like four, three, four years ago, and um, this photographer just comes up, takes a photo of me, like some street style photographer, takes a photo of me, and then goes away. I, I get up, and, and then I chase her down, and I'm like, oh, hey, um, you know, I would love to help you one day. Um, you know, if I could do anything to help you, I'm just really, you know, I want to be really good in fashion. I'm trying to learn right now. And then she's like, I'm actually a stylist, and I'm going to be doing a photo shoot this Saturday. And um, I won't pay you, but you could be my assistant, um, and you, you could do that for me. So, I mean, I didn't get paid. I, I went over there to just learn about being a stylist um, and then um, story about the shoes. <laughs> I, if you don't know, um, but you, you'll still know if you want to be a stylist or if you ever uh, anything to do with like even photo shoots, which probably all of you probably part of, 
um, is that many of the stylists, what they do is they buy the clothes or the shoes they need from a store that day of the photo shoot, and then later on they, they return it. <laughs> so I had to do that. Um, I had to go and I had to put my face in there and I had to say, yeah, I'm buying this for my niece and I had to go buy the shoes and then we do the photo shoot and then at the end of the photo shoot, I had to go back and I say, uh, my niece actually likes another shoe. I'm sorry, can I return this? You know, um, I mean, this is all the things that I, that I, this is part of the things that I went through, you know, just to become better, to learn. And you know what happened from that photo shoot? I meet the photographer there at that photo shoot. We become good friends. A few months later, he starts his own magazine. He has a magazine event. He says, Kevin, why don't you do a fashion show at my magazine event? So I do my first fashion show, free, no cost to be, because of that. Because of running up to that random girl who took a photo of me in the street, willing to just break out of my comfort zone, willing to work for free, willing to want to learn, being hungry, I get my first fashion show free. And then we did a couple more fashion shows after that. I, I had a fashion show at the Tribeca Grand Hotel, you know, about seven, eight months ago. Uh, you could Google, you Google my name, you, you'll be able to see it, you know. Um, and that's all from just that one time, and then I built relationships, you know, with him. And um, I'm going to get into, you know, building relationships and, and networking, too. That's, like, very, very crucial, um, no matter what you want to do. Um, can you talk, I'm sorry to interrupt, a little bit about um, the fact that you changed careers, you went to business school, and... Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, I mean, for me to find my passion, it, it took it took a little time. Uh, I actually was um, going to business school, and I got my my bachelor's degree first. Um, I, I come from um, half Asian, half Persian family, and the Asian side, my mother was was a strong power. My family, and um, if you know anything about Asian people. You, you, the, the, the kids, you better become like a doctor, a lawyer, a CEO, or, or work at a bank or something. Okay, you better be far away from fashion. It's possible. So, you know, I just wanted to make my mother happy, and um, I, I went for my uh, business degree at first for undergrad, and then after that, I actually did real estate, because uh, my mother's a, a broker in Queens, so I did real estate for a little bit, um, and I also did some stock trading a bit. Um, but after a while, um, the last thing I did before fashion was, was real estate. Um, something was burning inside of me after I did real estate. You know, I sold a few homes, I rented a lot of apartments. I, I was doing decent, you know. Um, but, you know, after a year of it, something was just bothering me. Like, it was like eking at me. And I knew I just had to go follow my passion, you know. And I just had to drop everything I just had to go for, you know, with barely any money. And what you know got me to that realization is because I did all these different things. You know, I went for my bachelor's in business, then I did stock trading, and then I, I did real estate. You know, when you actually just go out there and you start trying to find what you want to do, and you're willing to get your hands dirty, you're willing to explore, you're willing to put in hard work. You know, things are just gonna fall like clear to you. Like the universe is gonna give you. You know. It sounds crazy, but it's true. It's like your mind's gonna start getting clear. You know, you're gonna start to realize what you should do, what you're supposed to do, what you're good at. You know, so don't don't be afraid to just to just go out there. Um, I mean, I'll tell you like a little story um, from me from when I was a kid to you know getting to to here was um, I as a kid I loved fashion. You know, but I never really thought it could be a career. But I always some of my hobbies were, and oh, I'm gonna tell you later that using your hobbies from when you're a kid, that could really tie into what you wanna do uh, now. Um, but when I was a kid, I was sketching, and, and then I remember I always wanted to dress up. I was nine, 10 years old, and I always wanted to dress up nice. I was like gelling my hair, and I was like putting on a nice t-shirt and jeans, and I would offer my parents, like, can I buy groceries for you? Like, can I buy milk for you? You know, it's like, what nine, 10 year old kid do you know that offers their parents to go buy groceries, you know? <laughs> I, I did that just so I could go outside and just so I could, you know, gel my hair and, and look nice and just put on my nice clothes, you know? I just, what I just love to do. Um, but I was just like, you know, it's just, okay, whatever, that's maybe a hobby or something I just like to do. 
but then I get into um, business college and um, going through business school, I still don't have a major yet. I just pick like business administration, something like liberal <laughs> arts. And because I still don't know exactly what I'm going to do, but I knew I'm going to do something in business just to try to make my, my mother happy and my parents happy. So um, I'm actually about to graduate, and then this is when I meet my best friend now. He's like a mentor to me, and um, his name is Andre Hatchett. He's an entrepreneur. Um, he has like two businesses. And I had like a life-changing dinner with him like right before I was about to graduate. And you know, at dinner, he just tells me, like out of nowhere, to start your fashion business. What? It's like just, just start your own fashion business, you know. And I have like no skills, uh, proper skills in fashion. Never had any fashion education. And then, you know, but I thought about it for a little bit, and then less than like a minute, you know, something came to the realization in, in my soul that yeah, this is what I'm going to do. You know, it's going to be okay. It's going to be good. Um, so then from there, I, I had like these crazy dreams that. Um, you know exactly what kind of business am I gonna have? Am I gonna what in fashion am I gonna do? You know, but I realized that this is what I love since I was a kid, and I could actually use this as like my career, you know. And then that's when I started going into doing stock trading. I had about ten thousand dollars saved up um, from working high school and college, and I had some crazy dream that I could make a lot of money from uh, stock trading real quick, and I could use it to my fashion business. Um, in about six months, I, I lost like almost all of that money. You know, <laughs> I I was going full force. I was like taking stock trading classes. I was like putting the MSNBC, the stock uh, trade channel, on TV every morning. I was reading books. I was waking up every day at like 8 a.m. Um, but I lost almost all that money. So then I, I went into real estate, uh, thinking that okay, I can make some more money. Um, it's good to know communication skills because that's what you're gonna do a lot as a, as a real estate agent. And that's another thing that is so important, communication. I mean, you wanna be a designer, you wanna be a buyer, you wanna be a stylist, you wanna be whatever. Communication is, is necessary for all of that. For Even if you don't wanna be successful and big, if you just wanna be an employee, that's nothing wrong with that. But even if you wanna just be an employee, you gotta be able to communicate. You're gonna to have to have to communicate with your whole team if you want to be a merchandiser, if you want to be a buyer, whatever you want to do. You're gonna to have to talk to the the designer. You're gonna to have to talk to the tech pack team. You're gonna to have to talk to the technical designer. You're gonna to have to talk to the store. You're gonna to have to relay all this information back and forth. You know, you don't know. You you're not good at communicating. Then you're not gonna be able to do basically any job unless uh, you want to be a plumber. Um, And what's also very important is that you have to have like this, you have to know what you want to do. Once you get to that point that you know what you want to do, you can't keep switching around. Your small goals and, and the things that you're going to be doing on that journey to your big goal might change around a bit. Um, but your, your big vision, exactly what you want to um, accomplish in, in, in your dream and all that, you have to keep that set, you know. I don't know how many times, and maybe you guys have people you know do this too, but I don't know how many times I come across people, it's like, I knew them for a while, they want to be a model, and then out of the nowhere, it's like, okay, I want to be a designer, I'm going to start sketching now, you know? And then they just pause their whole career, like, another few years just from that. Or, I want to be a buyer, you know, they start taking classes for like a year or two, and all of a sudden it's like, you know what, I don't even want to be in fashion, I'm going to go into art school. You know, or, I mean, I'm gonna go to music school. So, once you know exactly the big picture you want, you have to keep that. All the successful people out there, they don't change. You know, what kind of uh, life or what kind of goal, what kind of dream that they have. I mean, you know, Steve Jobs knew exactly what he wanted to do. He stayed just going, building Apple Company. You know, he didn't go and try to build like restaurants. You know, Drake wants to be a rapper. He's a rapper. You don't see him trying to do a rock band right now. You know. You gotta know exactly what your big goal, your vision is, and stick, and stick with that. Uh, your, your small goals and things um, on the way, it might change, um, but that's totally okay. Um, but, I mean, like I said, to get to that point is that you just have to really put yourself out there and, and, and work hard and willing to, to make mistakes and willing to, to fail. Uh, 
I've had so many obstacles. Um, I don't even know, I lost count how many, but they all made me like a lot better. Um, I, I had big failures too. Um, one of the times when I was, one of my first photo shoots, I'm doing a photo shoot. Um, I needed the pictures really quickly. Um, I don't know if I needed to give it to a magazine or, or, or I just needed the pictures quickly. So I had about five, 10 models come. They come to my apartment at that time. It was just a little apartment. And um, I get all these people from like, um, that are just willing to do it for me because everybody wants to just build a portfolio. I actually found these people, I don't know how. And then I get the photographer and the makeup artist, they all come and we're doing a photo shoot. And we already agreed um, beforehand that everyone is going to do it just for um, getting the experience and getting the photos. You know, there's no payment involved for any, uh, throughout anybody. Um, so we get it done. And then wait about a week, don't hear anything from the photographer, waiting on the photos. Um, all the models are contacting me. It's like, where's my photos? Where are the photos? You know, I'm starting to sweat. And then we get to the next week, photographer finally responds back and he's like, out of nowhere, he just says, I want $600. You know, you gotta give me $600 for all these. So, and it's like, I didn't have the $600, I didn't have that budget, you know? And, and then all these models are waiting for their photos, you know? So I, I couldn't do it. And the models didn't get the photos, we couldn't get the photos done. And you know, I had to just tell everyone straight up that Listen, I'm, I'm sorry, um, this is what happened. Uh, I'm not able to do it. But then I just picked myself up and I just you know, found more people, other models, <clears throat> found another photographer, of course, and we just made another photo shoot. You know? And then photos were good, everyone got, got their photos, and, and everyone was, was, was very happy. You know? But these are the type of things, you know, I, I went through, when I was in the beginning, I had to go buy all these fabrics and, and things like that myself. I had to go find a sample maker. You know, I'm, I'm very on a tight budget. You know, um, I didn't even have the support of my, my mother at first. You know, I, I told my mother, you know, I'm going into fashion, and she's like, just nonstop arguing and yelling. And she's like, at the point that she just like started not even talking to me for a little bit. And I told her like, Mom, don't worry. You know, I'm gonna take care of this myself. It's gonna be okay. Don't worry about me. Um, but yeah, I had to go on this on my own. So I know if I could do this on my own, then any of you guys could. Uh, so I had to go find, first thing, some sample makers that were actually good prices. And um, if any of you know, in New York City, here in the Garment Center, it is so expensive just to make a sample. Um, making a leather jacket is, was about $700 just for that. But that's actually even a good price. So. I'm taking my fabric and I'm knocking on doors, talking to people, negotiating prices, um, and just nonstop, you know, just fail, 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 rejection, or, or we're too busy right now, or oh, we don't have time for a new design, or oh, this is the price, a thousand dollars. Like, okay, no. I even had time with someone, I had my door slammed in my face, you know, because the negotiations went bad. And then finally, from me keep on going around and, and, and asking people, this person knew, this person who had a friend who, who knew about this place downtown. So I go with this place and we go downtown to by Tribeca or near Chinatown, Tribeca, and go into this old fabric store. The place is about to close down actually. Fabric just laying around area, dirty. And then we go to the basement and it's like a little factory there with this Chinese lady and we just connect right away. And she gives me great price, and we've been working like together ever since for a few years now. Uh, so you, you can't ever just, just stop or, or think that just because things aren't going your way for a few days, a few weeks, or a few tries, you're getting rejected that, okay, you know, that you're gonna put your head down and that's it. You know, you have to really keep going. And, Especially in the fashion industry, you know, like I said, I, I don't want to make it look like it's all roses and everything. Um, there is many parts of it, as you know, that is, that is beautiful and glamorous, but um, a lot of it is, is tough. There's, there's a lot of people that are jealous. There, there's cutthroat people. Um, there's, there's peop there's, it's very competitive. I mean, you know, I was talking to um, somebody who works at Tom Brown, one of the creative leads at Tom Brown. He was telling me that there's about 
at, at the time of graduation, there's about maybe a few hundred, two, three hundred, maybe more, or I think even maybe in the thousands of students graduating uh, that are designers or, or buyers. And then for the people, the amount that is actually have open positions and the now amount of brands is maybe, maybe about 50 to 100. So you're always going against, and this, is, and this is just for every semester. Now you build that up over a few semesters, that's multiplying hundreds and hundreds and hundreds. So you already just one semester, you're already going against at least a few hundred people, or maybe even a thousand people. You know? So you know, it's not, a lot of unpretty things happen in here. Um, people cheating, and people telling you a lot of things in your face, and then they do something else. Okay, or they promise you something and it's not going to happen. So just know that, but don't let anything ever stop you. Like I said, you have, that, you have to keep that goal, that dream that you want in your head. If you keep that goal, the dream, the life you want, or the job you want, or what you want, that's going to help you get past um, all these obstacles, these liars, um, these jealous people, the failures, the rejections, um, the patience that you're going to need to go through, go through it all. Um, don't, don't be afraid of that. Um, oh, yes. You, you, got, you have to network. Um, you know, we all, we all know it's like, you know, it's who you know, or we all say it's what you know. I believe it's both. I believe it's both as what you know and, and who you know. Um, but definitely who you know is very, very important. Um, the way that you get to the job you want or to go up, um, or, or to become successful, or even if you don't, uh, like I say, if you don't want to have your own business, that's totally fine. If you don't want to be famous, that's totally fine. But um, just for you to get to where you want to get to, you're going to have to know the right people. Um, and you need like a team of supporters. You need to have people that will support you too. You know, nobody's an island, you know. Anybody great you think about, they will have like a team with them. Alexander Wang, um, the biggest buyers for Macy's, or the biggest buyers for uh, Harris, or the biggest buyers for Saks. Um, they're all, you know, when they're doing when they're doing the merchandising, you know, they're, they're working with other merchandisers, and then they have these uh, technical designers that they work with, um, and then they also have to work with the factories overseas and all of that. So they they have all these different they're, they're different parts of their team and the people that support them, and they support those people as well. You know, obviously, with designers, they have like their whole team of designers too, as you all know. So you, you got to be able to have. The, the support and the team. And also networking is so crucial um, for, for that and also just going up the ladder, um, just um, learning. Um, you g don't be afraid to just you know, go out there to just go on the internet and look for New York City events. I mean, go, you know, you're, you're right here. You're, you're in FIT. Just start talking to people in, in the school. Start talking to people here in the class. Make connections here. Uh, and it's so important to have like a good a good network of people. Um, I, I, I you still do it. I used to a lot. Go like a meetup.com. You know, it's a free website where you go find meetups of different type of um, organizations and things going on uh, locally around you for for basically anything. So I started going to all these different events, all fashion related, like photography meetup or then like designer meetup or just like some little indie designer and wants to do like a little fashion show, I, I go to them. And I'm going there and, I, and I'm networking, I'm, I'm giving out cards. I mean, yeah, I'm getting a drink too, of course, and listen to the music, but I'm, I'm, give, I'm making connections and I'm introducing myself and I'm just telling them what I'm about, you know, cause, and I don't care what they, they think. You know, some people just be like, oh yeah, you're trying, to, you're trying to do this, you're trying to do that, ha, yeah, you're not gonna do it. I don't care if they think that, or I don't care if they, they laugh at me, I, because, it's still, I just say, okay, and I move on to the next person that can help me. And that's how I kept on, on growing. I mean, one example is I, I, I go to this networking event, and, and because of this networking event, I'm actually you know, on one of these websites. On, 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 this is how I got one of my online detail. Uh, that's how I'm selling on um, 19th Amendment. 19th Amendment is like a new um, brand, but they're growing very big, and they just sponsor and they sell uh, new design clothing. And they were on the CBS Morning Show. And uh, they were in WWD, Women's Wear Daily. Um, and I'm like one of their biggest designers on, on their site. How did I get to them? One of the networking events I went to, it was just like some business networking event. You see nothing but like all these 
fat cats, just the old, these old fat dudes in the suits and tie, you know, walking around with drinks, and then you see some like older ladies like that too. I meet this Korean lady. She's a Korean lawyer, okay? I don't know what it's gonna help me with, but I talk to her, she really, you know, likes what I'm about, what I'm doing, this and that, we connect, we network. She says, oh, I know this guy who was a venture capitalist, he just started this venture capitalist company. You know, he's actually thinking about some fashion brands, maybe you should talk to him. She connects me with him, and then boom, we're working together now with me and this venture capitalist. I go to his Wall Street office, floor to ceiling windows, I'm like the 90th floor, you know, and I'm presenting my stuff to him and he really likes it. This is just from meeting this Korean lawyer at this event with all these fat dudes, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and then, guess what? He introduced me to 19th Amendment. He's like, oh, I'm also, we're also investing in this company called 19th Amendment. Um, they're working with a lot of new designers. And you know, you should definitely talk with them. I'm gonna connect you guys. So he connects me with them. Boom. Now, I'm, I'm working with them. They're doing an advertisement for me, social media for me. You know, I'm not paying for any of this. They gave me a fashion show in Boston. I was in Boston a couple months ago. I was invited to do a fashion show over there um, with uh, Ministry of Supply. I don't know if you know Ministry of Supply, but Ministry of Supply is in some, some boutiques and department stores. Yeah, so I did a fashion show with them. And yeah, this is all from just me going out there and networking. You have to go out there and meet these people. People are wanting to do business. Why do you think people are in New York City? Why do you think people move from Kansas and Indiana and California and Texas to come to New York City? Why do you think people come from across the world to New York City? You think they just didn't like, like their, their, their apartment there? <laughs> they want to do business. They want to network. They want to connect with other people. You know, people coming from Africa and Hong Kong and Australia, people coming from Russia, just dropping everything to come over here, you know? You guys gotta take advantage of, of the city that you're in and go out there and, and just not be afraid to look stupid, so what? You know, nothing is, 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 is a mistake as long as you learn from it. You know, nothing could, could be failed. You know, all the crap that I've been through has helped me get to, you know, selling on an online retail store. Um, I'm working with investors right now. I did about a few fashion shows, including in Boston and a Tribeca Grand Hotel. I'm one of the top stylists at George Armani Fifth Avenue, the flagship store of all of the United States. I'm, I'm helping people from different parts of the world. I'm helping different ladies from, from presidents of companies to just rich ladies from Beverly Hills, you know. And how did I get here? You know, it, it wasn't easy. Nothing wasn't easy. I, I don't even know how many times, you know, I, I counted but buttons at, at Marissa Webb. And this was just about like two years ago, maybe even like just two and a half years ago. I'm, just, I'm in Marissa Webb um, design studio. I'm not getting paid. You know, and this is like after 